Why is Russia's Type 23,900 amphibious assault ship, which has taken five years to build, not even a skeleton yet? When satellite photos from Europe and the US reveal the slow progress of its construction, what are the dilemmas behind this much-anticipated, quasi-aircraft carrier? As Russia's first self-developed amphibious assault ship since the end of the Cold War, the Type 23,900 was supposed to fill a huge gap in its Navy's amphibious operations. Since construction began in July 2020, the ship, which is designed to displace about 30,000 tons of water at full load and is diesel-fueled, had been seen as a symbol of Russia's revitalization of its maritime power. However, five years later, its construction progress only stays in the bottom skeleton of the basic molding stage, even less than the same period of China's construction of 075 amphibious assault ship of zero. China in the same time period has launched four similar ships, of which 3075 and 1076 type have entered service, or sea trial stage. This disparity not only reflects the deep-seated problems of the Russian shipbuilding industry, but also highlights the gap between its great power ambitions and the reality of the ability. From the beginning of the model public, the design of type 23900 has been questioned. Its island is too long. The bow of the ship is too narrow structure directly leads to the flight deck area is limited, the two elevators are arranged in the rear of the hull, and only a single time to carry a helicopter. Scheduling efficiency is far inferior to the United States and China of the same type of ships, with a double elevator layout. In contrast, China's Type 075 adopts front and rear split elevators and can carry two straight eight medium helicopters at a time, forming a generational gap between the deck utilization rate and the smoothness of aviation operations. More contradictory is that satellite images show the actual construction of the hull size far more than the Russian side of the parameters announced earlier. The full load displacement may exceed 40,000 tons, but this enlargement is not accompanied by the optimization of the design, but because of the risk of hasty adjustments to lead to an imbalance in the center of gravity. Technical level, Russia's lag in the design concept of large ships is exposed. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, its shipbuilding industry has long been focused on the nuclear submarine field. Surface ship design capability stagnated at the level of the late Cold War. 23,900 although borrowed from the layout of the French Northwest Wind class, but did not solve the problem of localization of the power system. Diesel-fueled combined power required high-performance gas turbines are still dependent on the Ukrainian technological legacy. While the 2014 after the break in the supply chain forced Russia to use the Ukrainian technology heritage, supply chain disruptions have forced the Russians to adopt downgraded alternatives, further slowing down the construction schedule. The predicament of the Kirk, Gulf, shipyard is typical of the decline of Russian industry. Lacking a modern dry dock and modular construction technology, the much-anticipated shipyard is still using the Soviet-era segment welding process, leading to inefficiencies in bringing the hulls together. Satellite images show that the first ship will only have its skeleton completed between 2020 and 2025, while China's Hudong Zhonghua shipyard will be able to build 3054 frigates and one Type 076 amphibious assault ship at the same time. Deeper, the Russian shipbuilding industry is facing a talent gap, the loss of young engineers, Key technical positions rely on older employees over 50 years of age, the double lack of experience and technological innovation. Western sanctions have exacerbated the supply chain crisis. Precision electronic equipment, special steel and shipboard weapons systems and port channels are blocked. Russia was forced to use civilian standards instead of military specifications. For example, the hull structure material strength reduced by 20%, radar system performance shrinkage. Although can shorten the construction period, but sacrificed the ship damage resistance and battlefield survivability. Although this strategy of replacing the West with the East temporarily maintains the survival of the project, it has posed hidden dangers for future combat effectiveness. The fate of the Type 23900 is further constrained by Russia's conflicting choices on naval development. After the outbreak of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, military spending has been tilted sharply toward the Army and nuclear forces. With the Navy's budget accounting for only 15% of defense spending in 2024, a drop of more than 10 percentage points from the 2010s. Meanwhile, the crippling overhaul of the Kuznetsov carrier, which has taken eight years, has exposed Russia's inability to maintain its existing large ships. 23,900 is expected to be a carrier replacement but its design is not equipped with electromagnetic catapults or fixed-wing takeoff and landing capabilities, 
and even if it were equipped with the improved Yak-141 vertical takeoff and landing fighters, the combat radius would be limited. Even with the improved Yak-141 vertical takeoff and landing fighters in the future, the combat radius and bomb capacity will not be able to match the US and China's fleet of shipborne airplanes. Diplomatic isolation has blocked the possibility of technological cooperation, as the aborted purchase of the Northwest Wind class in 2014 demonstrated, with Russia unable to acquire key technologies from the West and refusing to buy mature ships from China because of great power dignity. This strategic autarky has led to a vicious cycle of closed-door construction. The Type 075's modular construction cycle lasted only seven months, while the Type 23900 has not yet been built in five years. The technology gap continues to widen over time. China and Russia amphibious assault ship project contrast, in fact for the results of the transformation of the industrial system of the two countries' intuitive presentation. China's shipbuilding experience accumulated through the dumpling mode has formed a complete industrial chain covering design, materials, power, 75 type standardized segment construction, hull closing cycle compressed to 9 to 12 months, and supporting straight 20 helicopters, 726 a air cushion landing craft, and electromagnetic catapult technology synchronization and maturity, the formation of a systematic combat capability, systematized warfare. In contrast, Russia, even if the integration of 33 shipbuilding organizations to set up a joint shipbuilding group is still stuck in the aging equipment and shortage of funds, 22,350 frigate construction cycle of 14 years is clear evidence. More importantly, the clarity of China's naval strategy and the continuity of its resource investment have given impetus to the development of its ships. Three aircraft carriers and five amphibious assault ship planning straight to the demand for oceanic delivery, while Russia's Type 23,900 is more of an emergency response to the paralysis of the treasury ship. When China's 076 type to 60,000 tons of displacement integration of electromagnetic catapults and drones to work together, the Russian side is still struggling for the basic hull structure. The gap is no longer comparable to the performance of a single ship, but the overall industrial ecology of the descending blow. Even if the type 23,900 is eventually commissioned, its combat effectiveness is not optimistic. Lack of supporting three-dimensional delivery system, the Russian Marine Corps less than 20,000 people, and the lack of similar U.S. Army LCAC hovercraft landing craft, shipborne aviation forces rely on old-fashioned Ka-52 helicopters, difficult to realize rapid force projection. More serious is that the decline of the Russian shipbuilding industry in the short term without the possibility of reversal. The prolonged crisis in Ukraine will exacerbate the technological embargo. While the economic sanctions led to a 7% reduction in the defense budget in 2025 year-on-year, year, further squeezing the research and development of large-scale ship space. History has always been strikingly similar. The Soviet Union barely managed to maintain an aircraft carrier with the concept of an aircraft-carrying cruiser. And now Russia is trying to cover up the vacuum in its sea-going capabilities with a quasi-carrier. The slow progress of the Type 23900 epitomizes the naval ambitions of this former superpower. The ambition is still there, but the skeleton is rotten. When China's Type 004 aircraft carriers and Type 076 amphibious ships will form a battle group by 2030, Russia may still be celebrating the launch of its first ship, a dislocation of time and space that is perhaps the most profound illustration of the legacy of the Cold War.